doesn't really want to come off of there. I'll put some blocks underneath and belted it from the central part. It doesn't seem to be moving. Can't see any locking pins or circlips holding that on. Um, I'm thinking that should just pop off. It's mounted on a, a spline there and it's just like seized up so I might try and make some sort of puller for that. Right, I've made a simple puller from bits of scrap iron I had lying around. Let's see if we can pop that off there. It's a 20 ton jack, so it can't really say no. like a cone shaped spline man that was tight that took about probably five ton of pressure to get that off I was starting to wonder if there was any like secret pins in there that were holding it on but it was just um, really well clamped on so yeah I can do the bearing in there now bearing might be okay if I press that on slightly further to give it a bit more thrust because um, that's a roll bearing yeah I mean it feels okay actually it just feels like it needs to be pushed on slightly further gear doesn't seem too bad the bearings slightly worn but I think possibly it might just need a bit more pressure on that ring there so that pipe will fit over there onto that collar and I'll just push that down slightly enough to take up that slack that feels a bit better still spinning nice and freely there Yeah, that has actually tightened up that shaft. I'm quite happy with those bearings. I did swap the blades over so that these two were on opposite sides 
and these two here were on opposite sides and that made a big difference to the balance of the, um, the mower it's a, it's a lot better but I'm going to weigh them and try and get them even closer because I think the closer I can get the opposing blades um, the more balanced the mower will be 2.45 kilo and this one 2.63 2.39 that one 2.37 so just got to take a little little bit off this one and get those about the same weight and then it should be a bit smoother Right, 2.369, I've taken a bit of rust off that one just to bring the weight down, and 2.370s, that's pretty close to perfect. So those two are matched up, now it's these two here. I've taken quite a bit off that one because that was the heaviest so I just sort of ground the, the face all right 2.455 and 2.4 52 so that's pretty good I think that'll do me so all the blades can go back on now. These two heavier ones will be on opposing sides and these two lighter ones on the opposite sides. So I've put split pins in all the bolts. Uh, so the nuts are less likely to come off now. Alright, got some new oil in the gearbox, so that's ready to go back to work. Just wondering if I could mount it on the side of the hoff here, use it to trim the edges of the track, make some sort of frame to sit on the forks, and then have a little motor running it. I've got a little 14 horsepower motor that would just about do that. cut through those little branches no problems at all and that's about the sort of size we'll be dealing with so I think it's going to do the job I've got this old onion topper which was used on a, a market garden years ago um, and I think they'll make quite a good frame if I just mount it on the end here um, and the engine in the middle somewhere get rid of all this top part It's going to go something like that, but um, 
unfortunately there's just not quite enough room to get that gearbox in the gap there. I thought I was going to get in there, but I'll have to cut this arm and that just so I can squeeze it in there tight up against this. And then I can uh, bring a longer one up and maybe bolt it to that or something. Right, so the engine's going to go about there. Um, the the mower is on a bit of an angle, facing that way. So the end, that's why the engine is slightly um, on an angle this way. Got my highly technological engine setting up base there, and it's pretty well aligned there. It's not too bad. Alright, so I've got the engine on a pivot at the front, that's locked into place there, and I'm just adjusting it with this rod at the back, so that I can tension the belt if I need to. I think that clutch there is going to be the weakest link, um, because it's such a heavy gearbox. If this motor's just too small, I can I just have to, have to add another power source to it. I've got it chained on there now, um, it's pretty secure. That wouldn't look out of place on a Mad Max set. <laughs> I've got the fly-by-wire revs there, it's a bit of string. <laughs> so it's either on or off basically.
Well, it did a bloody good job actually. That worked better than I expected. Um, it ain't pretty, but it, it gets the job done. I ended up adding a couple of uh, wheel weights on the other side here just to stabilize everything. Uh, it sort of felt a little bit tippy with all that weight on one side. It could do with a few more horsepower, maybe 20, 25 horse. I think a little four-cylinder four car engine or something um, would have a lot more torque and a heavier clutch would be good as well. This one here is a bit light. It was perfect for the, the lighter stuff, but as soon as I got into the heavy branches like that, it was, it was slowing down and I had to back off and let it speed up again. The other option I think would be to have a little hydraulic um, motor here with a, an overrun clutch. Um, and just plumb it up to the, the Hoff hydraulics but that would be a lot more expensive I'd have to buy a lot of piping and valves and that sort of thing but if I keep an eye out for a, an old um, force on the car engine I think that would be ideal good that I could really make use of that mower because I was given it with the old Fiat tractor and I don't really do any mowing up here so, uh, so it's good to be able to use it for something so yeah that's the Mad Max uh, hedge trimmer Thanks for watching guys, catch you next time.